Okay, we got everybody listening. Forward inflation is exactly like a reverse inflation. It's identical, everything happens the same. Lift A's, don't pull A's, steer with the A's, you're lifting the low side. You weight shift and you walk into the wind at a 45 degree angle. So lift both A's gently at first. Basically, if you don't touch the A's, the glider will fly perfectly. Just like reverse, if you just drop your butt into it, the glider actually flies beautifully. If you start jerking A's, it's worse than if you did nothing. So forwards, run very gentle. Remember the arc of the A's is like this. The risers come this way. So do not be pulling your risers forward. Everybody likes to do that. Lift the glider with both A's. If it goes left, you're gonna add pressure to the left side, relax the pressure to the right side. You're gonna lean towards the high side and walk under the low side. Forward inflation is forward kiting. You've been doing it for hours and hours and hours. It is exactly the same other than where you put your fingers and a couple little tips. It should be a piece of cake. You should pick it up like that. If you can forward kite, you can do a forward inflation. You don't actually learn to do a forward inflation by doing a forward inflation. You learn to do it by piles of hours of forward kiting on the beach and running jumps and learning all that feel and loading so you never ever take a collapse. If you never had any of that, you're gonna totally look like those guys trying to launch. It's the same thing. You got no skills. Sure, if you run, that glider might come up and if you hit throttle, you might even get off the ground but that does not mean you can do it every time, everywhere, any place, without fail, no maybe about it. We want you to actually be able to have skill. So, we'll watch again. Lift the A's, keep a constant loading, don't come to a dead stop, lifts, runs. Of course, run means walk. It's about keeping, tension it's a tug of war if you walk forward and then stop and look up boom you just killed all your energy so you have to keep steady pressure as you're walking forward lifting a's you saw him ease off the high side a and he lifted only that right a and then you lean towards the high side you literally can't touch the brakes till it's up of course your hands are on the a's so you can't touch the a's till it's up but all you can do is lean left walk right bam which he did so fast and so small you hardly could see it it's literally that quick it's just like forward kiting the glider's above you it goes right you're gonna lean left and sidestep under it forwards and lean left forwards into the wind he lifts up he's lifting the right side a soon as it's up let go of the a's this is another huge mistake people make is they hold the A's and then they pull brakes with A's in their hands. And of course that pulls a full frontal. And this is what happens if you bury A's and don't know what you're doing. <laughs> you think it's funny. I kid you not. That's what people without training look like. It's insane. Yes, sir. I saw when Trevor hooked up. He did like we were doing reverse kiting and, and rolls is over hooked up and then then he unrolled yep he the forward. So is that how we hook up yeah. well do you know how to hook do you know how to hook up forward i don't then hook up reverse okay. and flip around um hooking up forward is super simple the risers come forward into the carabiners because forward. you're facing forward they come straight in face, face forward then. you got it okay. yep and reverse, you do the 180, hook them straight in, bam. So it's, the hooking up's uh, actually fairly simple, but we can walk you through it. I'll do it right but it now. doesn't really matter. You can just flip around, hook in reverse, and then turn it around if that's easier for you to remember. But depends on the wind. Okay, one big one. Okay, he's gonna hook in forwards. Get the riser straight, A's on top. Bingo. He lays the A's to the inside. <laughs> Up, out, in. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, Trevor, stand up. Stand up. Uh, reach the brakes, don't bend over. His arms cannot physically reach the brakes. This is a big one people have an issue with. Bend at the hips. 
Boom, now all of a sudden your arms can reach the brakes. Keep your legs straight and get your stretch in for the day. Legs straight, you can reach down. If you crouch, the brakes go down with you. <laughs> so, yeah, you just bend, but keep your legs straight, pull the A's off, then you hook under, put the A's under your thumb. So the riser falls over the back of your hand and the A is in your thumb. You don't grab the A, you don't pull the A, you don't lock your thumb onto it. They just sit there. If you keep your thumb open, they'll kind of naturally come out of your hands when the glider's up. So here we go. You can also hold it like this. <laughs> Make sure you follow the back of the risers to the brakes. That's exactly the same. Bam, there we go. Okay, then to get in the center of your glider, this is a tricky one. There's a lot of wrong ways to do it. That actually can work. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think. That works better than a lot of the techniques people use. Okay, my favorite is to stand and just turn my head to a 45. Do not turn your body. Habits are very bad. Do not turn your body and look at the glider. One turn your head. And you'll be calling for a line. Yeah, because you have to think what would happen if you had a motor running. You just shredded your lines. So don't do that. Even though you don't have a motor, prepare for the motor things like palms forward there's lots of little things we prepare you okay so the uh he just looks left and right out of peripheral vision turning his head left and right uses peripheral vision to center himself in the center of the glider make sure you run exactly away from your glider if the wind switched and came from over there run exactly away from your glider because if you run that way you're going to tension those lines first and the glider's going to go full bam and flip over but if you run straight away from it it'll inflate then it'll turn towards the wind and then you just turn and go with it see how this side came up because he ran the wrong direction on purpose and then he went with it turned bam pulled it up fixed it beautiful beautiful okay run directly away from the glider until the glider tells you where to go you never run where you want to go you run where the glider tells you to go so if the wind is over there boom he turns runs Woo <laughs> super skills rock it's like there's no maybe there's you either have control or you don't Okay, so if the wind is from over there, the glider will literally weather vane into the wind. The second you pull it up, it's gonna come up a little sideways and it's gonna go downwind. Keep running away from it. So if the glider goes over there, boom, I'm running exactly away from the glider. I literally had a brand new student come back to Utah. I don't know if you saw the video. He took off in a forward and the wind switched all the way around. He literally ran a 180. I didn't say a dang thing. He just automatically did it because the glider was going. It told him he was so used to going with the glider. He went with it, literally ran a 180. The glider switched directions, 180 degrees, and he made it successful. Beautiful. It's like skills like that are super skills. That's what we're talking about. So go where the glider tells you to go. It will always go with the wind. It is impossible for the glider to fly this way if the wind's that way. It will automatically turn and face into the wind or crumple upside down if you did nothing. So, because it ain't gonna fly sideways. It has to fly perfectly through the air. Um, so just turn and go with it. Okay, arms back, totally relaxed. Don't put any muscle in the arms when you go to lift it up. You're just feeling where the A's are, gentle pressure, lifting the A's maybe three, four inches above the other risers. As you hit it, bring it, leans into it. Don't stop forward motion, bam, brakes, bingo, beautiful. As soon as the glider came up, he immediately switched to loading the low side which happened so fast you didn't even see it. He weight shifted towards the high side and he sidestepped under it. Back under the teardrop. Little teardrop, you stay in the center of that. The glider comes up over there, you get under it. It's exactly what forward kiting is that you've been doing all that we've been yelling at you. If it pulls that way, go that way. Go with it, go with it, don't fight it. Don't be sitting there fighting and running away from your glider. And don't stop. Now, you think he stopped, but he didn't. 
This is another cool thing. Watch him run and boom. He's, see his lean? Beautiful. Forget about what the glider did. He ran. When that glider opens, you basically have a 30 foot drogue shoot. It's impossible to run. So what he did, boom, he just leaned. Everybody wants the football run. Rawr! And like waste piles of energy. When it brings you to a stop like that, boom, you lean your chest into it, just like a forward run and jump or standing forward kiting. You lean into it and just let the weight of your body do all the work. You just stand there and relax. Now, the second that glider comes up to about here, now you're gonna all of a sudden start falling forwards. Bam, you better take off running like a bullet, exactly like a forward run and jump. Hands up, fall. As soon as you feel yourself falling, run like a bat out of hell. You gotta do it. So, leans, uses leverage of his body, which is why it looks effortless. The second the glider lets you move forward, boom, you take off running immediately because you have to keep it loaded. So right here where that glider opens, you're, you might come to a dead stop depending on the wind. If you had zero wind, it wouldn't happen. You would actually keep moving a little. <laughs> oh yeah. Scoops. Yeah, you actually can't load it. It's like doing a tug of war while moving your feet. It doesn't work. It's just a tug of war. You just freaking lean back. No effort. Lean back. It's like, it's not even as hard as standing there. It's just very simple. You lean, lean into it. Same thing with reverse, same thing. You take that big step and when the glider pulls you, boom, you drop your butt, you plant your feet. And if there's enough wind, you slide with it. Or if there's not, you lean until you fall. As soon as you fall backwards, bam, you take off running as fast as you can go and break until the glider stops you. Never run and then stop or the glider completely unloads just like a tug of war. Same exact thing. You got to keep that tug of war. So watch, he's going to run with no hands at all. Runs, leans, runs. No aids. No nothing. Glider wants to fly. So the hands are there more to feel where it's at than it is to jack it up. So don't be throwing muscle into your arms. If you put muscle in your arms, you're gonna royally jack it up, fold the glider in half, stuff like that. So just totally relax. Don't pull brakes while running and burying A's. See the leading edge? That's what happens when you pull the A's. So you pull the A's forward, you fold the glider up like a taco, and it's like he runs and runs and runs and it doesn't wanna fly. Neither does it wanna fly straight. Even though it's a dominator, it's pretty good about that. But you saw how it just didn't want to come up because it's in a frontal collapse because he's folding it in half. So gentle on the A's, gentle pressure. A lot of it has to do with the loading of your body. Run, lean, let the weight of your body carry it. As soon as you can move, go back into your running as fast as you can go, allowing the glider to carry your body weight. At no point do you stand up. You're always leaning against the chest strap. So your feet are behind you, not under you. You put your feet under you, boom, glider's gonna collapse. It's over, you're done. So, one more time. Dude, go flying. Yeah. Let's just put Michael, he'll do anything. <laughs> there you go. Ooh yeah, tangle angle. And that's what happens if you fold the risers in half and start jerking and yanking. Uh, the other thing you notice, which Trevor does, nobody else does when you're new, is how smooth. He made it look like it was effortless. No epileptic seizures. You didn't see him going, jerking all over. Any jerky movement jacks the glider up. He didn't run backwards <laughs> and move the feet. Just leans and when his feet Move, he goes with it. Smooth as can be. <laughs> I mean, it's funny, but that's what people do when they're new. It's like you try like, you know, 5,000% effort, but it jacks it up because you're just jerking and muscling it instead of nice and smooth gliding across the ground keeping a steady, smooth, consistent tug of war. Once the glider is up, 
boom, roll into full throttle. And this is where it gets different than your forward kiting is just the transition. You transition from leaning and pulling the glider up to throttle and standing up and being pushed. Let's have Daniel come on over. There you go, turn that way and just let me push you. Lean back, nope, you're walking. Nope, lean back, lean back. Okay, not so hard, not so hard. A little less, a little less, less, less. Bingo, there you go. Okay, if you watch his feet, when you're being pushed, your feet are in front of you or under you. If you walk, your feet are behind you. Your feet should always be under you and in front of you with flat top. You got freaking 200 pounds of thrust. Use it. Transition, boom. You just stand up. You don't try and lean way back and make it ridiculous, but you just stand up, relax, and let the motor and the glider do the work. But you don't stop. Don't go like this. <laughs> It's a transition from walking to being pushed. Walking to being pushed. One, one thousand, one, one thousand, bam. Zero to full throttle. Unless you're super light. If you're super light, it would be a little bit different. I, once you have skills, you would actually use full throttle on the ground. And then as you leave the ground, you would back off a little bit. But we don't teach you that because the back off, people go to dump throttle and then fall out of the sky. That's not good. So basically, nobody here is so light that they can't just full throttle, boom. And the motor will push you really well. What you don't do is keep leaning and then hit full throttle. That's like, okay, Daniel, come jump on my back as hard as you can. I was joking, I was joking, I was joking. <laughs> if 200 pounds jumps on your back like this, boom, you go right in your face and you fall in your butt. So you really don't want to be leaning forward at the end of that one second boom transition from leaning you have to lean to get leverage to pull the glider up and then transition to power Boop, bang and that's how you do it beautiful then it's actually freaking effortless is this how you do normal tandems boom no generally we don't do tandems unless there's enough wind for the glider to stay up just like the tandem i did yesterday um the well a lot of times i'm doing them when there's too much wind for other people to be flying but normally i would only do a tandem if there's at least enough wind for the glider to stay up um you could do them in nil wind but then you have to run faster and you're trying to run bow legged while they run straight and your feet can hit their feet and you can trip and fall down really easy because you have to run about 11 miles an hour in no wind um Oh yeah. It's so beautiful when you just do it effortlessly, feel it. Lean, walk, pull, lean, walk, pull. Um, so you really want, on tandems, you want to launch it basically a fast waddle. So get yourself some wind where the glider will stay up and you'll literally be like, I mean, if you saw the launch, it's nothing. And that was on an extra, extra small. So about eight miles an hour, you mm, Less, four. Four is good. I mean, as little wind as we'll keep the glider up. If you can kite and keep the glider up, then the tandem should be effortless. I mean, you can do tandems whenever, but as the pilot in command, who's supposed to be the expert, you wanna make it a good experience for your passenger. You really don't wanna be doing it when there's a high likelihood that they could fall down and you fall on top of them, because that's not cool. They're trusting you with their life and they expect you to know what you're doing. They don't expect right. these guys to fly straight at the sand dunes. That's like totally dishonest to take someone tandem if you're a moron. It's not, it's really, really not cool. And if you kill somebody tandem, it, it could totally jack up the sport. So you really want to make sure you are 100%. So basically like Luke, or uh, you saw he worked all the way down to a 5XS. He's just looking perfect, burning in the landings. He could do tandem, piece of cake, wouldn't even be a challenge. Just pick the conditions where you got some wind for the glider to kite.